You want to know something that's really cool? Telescopes. I've always wanted one, but I've never gotten around to getting one. It turns out, though, they're pretty simple to make. The only hard part is getting the big concave mirror for it. So today, I'll be trying to make one of those. Now, I probably should just go out and buy one. They're not really that expensive, especially for the size of telescope I want to make. But where's the fun in that? Instead, I think I'll spend way more time and money trying to make a mirror at home. So, how do I do that? Well, normally, I'd make one of these mirrors out of glass. But glass is very messy and hard to work with, so I wanted to find another way to do it. And this is when I came across liquid mirror telescopes. As the name suggests, these telescopes use a liquid, usually a liquid metal, as a mirror. Which sounds crazy, but it turns out that if you spin a liquid, it forms a parabola, which is the perfect shape for a telescope's mirror. Let me print off some parts and I'll show you how this works. Here, I have some glycerin in a rotating cup. You can see that it's already acting like a mirror. Now, as I change the rotation speed, you can see the focal length of this mirror is changing. I was honestly shocked to see just how well this worked. But, if you've been paying attention, you might have noticed a slight issue with this type of telescope. It relies on gravity to maintain the parabola, which means it can only look directly upwards. If only there was some way I could freeze this liquid in place. As it turns out, I'm not the first one to have this idea. In fact, this is how they made the mirrors for the upcoming Giant Magellan Telescope. They made a giant rotating kiln where the glass for the mirror was melted. As it spun, the molten glass naturally formed a parabolic shape. By keeping the kiln spinning during the casting, they achieved a near-perfect finish on it. I'll link a video showing how they made these mirrors, and it's super cool. I just can't build a rotating kiln at home yet, though. There are some other methods I can try. So instead of a kiln and glass, I'm going to try using a rotating tub and resin. I'll take the demo from before and use resin instead of glycerin. Already, we can see that the liquid resin is reflecting pretty well. Now I just need to let it spin and cure for a couple days. And it's done. Now this looks pretty good, but if I hold it up to the light you can see that there are still some surface blemishes in it, and this isn't a perfect mirror. I'm starting to wonder now if it's actually possible for this method to produce a good mirror, but I got another idea. It always seems like when I make a casting, the bottom of the casting is perfect, even if the top surface isn't. So what if I could float the resin on some other fluid, and then spin them both together to get a perfect bottom surface? I'll keep the same spinning bowl as before, but this time I'll fill it with a denser fluid. Then I'll pour the resin in. As the bowl spins, the interface between the two fluids will form the parabolic shape. Only one problem, though. This would give me a convex mirror, and I need a concave mirror. Thankfully, this could be remedied by using an intermediate silicone mold. Here, the silicone will be floating on the fluid and will cure as it's spinning. And once it cures, I'll take it out, flip it around, and use it as a mold for the resin. This will let me keep the hopefully good surface finish at the interface, and give me a concave mirror at the end. This all sounds great, but what fluid can I float the silicone on? Well, for the silicone to float, the fluid needs to be more dense than the silicone. The silicone I'll be using is this, Mold Star 30, which has a density of 1.12 grams per cubic centimeter. So whatever I use needs to be denser than that. Thinking about the liquid metal telescopes from before, liquid mercury would be perfect. We know it produces a perfect mirror surface, and it's super dense, at 13.55 grams per cubic centimeter. Unfortunately, it's quite toxic, and I like living, so I'd rather try something else. The only other liquid metal I know is a gallium alloy. It's not quite as dense at 6.44 grams per cubic centimeter, but it should work, and it's almost perfectly safe. I'll just see about buying some. I think I'd need about one kilogram of it. And okay, that's a bit out of my price range. Liquid metal is out. But I've still got a few other options. First is corn syrup, which has a density of around 1.4 grams per cubic centimeter. And there's glycerin, which has a density of about 1.26. And finally, a table salt brine with a density of about 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter. So I decided to do a test pour with each of them. Here I'm pouring the silicon onto the glycerin, but the rest of the pours looked pretty similar. The corn syrup worked pretty well but there were a lot of bubbles trapped between it and the silicone. I messed up the pouring with the brine, and ended up with this pillar-like thing in the center. However, the brine also encountered the same bubbling issue as the corn syrup. By far, the best was the glycerin. Although there were a couple bubbles, it left a very smooth surface overall. 
But this still wasn't usable, because there was a waviness that was distorting the reflection. Still, these results felt very promising, so I continued onward. I thought I might have better luck with a lower viscosity silicone, so I purchased some... Ecoflex 00-45. Comparing the two, you can see just how much less viscous this new silicone is. It also has a slightly lower density of only 1.12 grams per cubic centimeter. Unfortunately, it had the same surface waviness as the first silicone. Since this new silicone casting wasn't any better, I decided I'd just stick with the first one. So I put the mold together and poured in some resin. While that was curing, I had one more idea. What if I tried resin floating on the glycerin? I had no real reason to think this might work, but I didn't have any other ideas, so I figured it was worth a shot. Unfortunately, neither of these two methods produced a better result. The surface waviness I was worried about on the silicone did end up getting transferred to the resin. And the resin I had floating on the glycerin ended up with these really weird surface blemishes. At this point, my best result was my first attempt here, where I just had the resin spinning as it cured. It wasn't perfect, but I thought it could still work. So I decided to go forward with silvering this. At the moment, this blank is just clear resin, but of course mirrors need to be reflective to work. That's kind of the whole thing they do. So to make it reflective, I need to apply a reflective coating to it. I won't actually be using silver for this. Instead, I'll be electroplating a thin layer of nickel onto it. Electroplating is really cool. It uses an electric current to move metal atoms from one surface to another. Only one problem, though, is the surface the atoms are being moved to has to be conductive, and this resin isn't conductive. So first, I need to coat it in a layer of conductive paint. Initially, I tried to use an airbrush to apply the primer, but I wasn't able to get as smooth of a coat as I wanted, so I went out and got a can of spray primer. And with a few sprays, the surface was primed. Once the primer had fully dried, I used my airbrush to apply the conductive paint. And when that had dried, I checked the resistance across the mirror, and I was seeing about 8 kilo ohms, which isn't that conductive, but hopefully it's enough for electroplating. For the electroplating setup itself, I decided to use the blank as its own container for the electrolyte. To make that work, I had to bend the corners of my nickel plate so it would sit nicely inside. Then, I used a few plastic hooks to suspend it just above the mirror surface. Now it was finally time to start the plating process. I poured the electrolyte in and attached both the mirror and the nickel plate to the power supply. And with everything ready to go, I turned on the power... And not much happened. I did see some bubbles forming around the leads, so I knew something was going on, but I didn't see any changes to the surface of the mirror. About an hour later though, I did begin to see some metal spots growing outwards from the leads, so I left it to run overnight. The next day, the parts of the surface that I could see looked like they were plated, so I took out the nickel plate and poured the electrolyte back into its bottle. And after rinsing off the mirror, I was happy to see that the plating had mostly worked. There were still a couple small regions where the metal hadn't reached, but overall it looked pretty good. Unfortunately, upon closer inspection, the surface looked pretty rough. Still, I had some hope I could polish it flat, so I started by hand polishing with some fine sandpaper. But it quickly became apparent that this was going to take forever. Thankfully, I have a Dremel. Once the surface was feeling pretty smooth to the touch, I switched over to a buffing pad and some diamond polishing compound and I slowly worked my way up through finer and finer grits. At this point I was beginning to see reflections in the mirror, which was pretty cool. Unfortunately, it was also becoming apparent just how bumpy the metal surface actually was. After some more polishing, it was clear to me that this roughness was due to the underlying paint, and I wasn't going to be able to get a fully polished mirror out of this. Plus, the metal surface was also beginning to get too thin for much more polishing and it was starting to flake off near the uncoated regions. So, where does this leave me? Obviously, this isn't good enough to be a telescope mirror. You can see a bit of a reflection in it, but it's not much. I could try again, but this is actually my second attempt at electroplating, and my first attempt turned out even worse. And honestly, even if I could somehow get the electroplating perfect and figure out how to polish it without damaging it, I'd still need a better, flatter mirror blank to start with than what I managed to produce. And I tried a lot of things in this one. And I just couldn't get this part to work. But overall, I'm still pretty happy with how this project turned out. Sure, it definitely didn't turn out as well as I would have liked, but I learned a lot getting here and I got to try some new techniques, which was fun. Plus, I think it's important to show projects that don't work out perfectly. 
Not everything you try is going to succeed, especially on the first go, and that's fine. Just keep having fun with your projects, and remember to learn from the failures. And on that point, here's what I'd do differently if I decided to try this again sometime. First, I still think that floating resin or silicone on liquid metal might be a viable way to get a good mirror blank. It's worth trying, but very expensive. Second, I had a lot of issues with bubbles getting trapped in my castings, and a vacuum chamber would have definitely helped with degassing the resin. And finally, I don't think electroplating is the right path for a truly reflective optical surface like this. Chemical silvering, which might be a bit more expensive, seems like it works so much better based off what I've seen. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions that you think would work, definitely leave a comment. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.